Were you surprised? Seriously. Are you really surprised? Was you expecting anything different? What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sport topic, and today we're going to talk some football. Houston Texans football. Houston Texans fall to the Baltimore Ravens, 33-16. to And to be honest, I'm out here laughing to keep myself from crying. That's really what it is. <laughs> you got to laugh to keep yourself from crying because this is just being bad is an understatement. This is completely unacceptable. But the bad thing about it, and the probably most frustrating thing about it is, are you really surprised? Were you expecting anything different? Let's talk about, let's break it down. Like I said, Houston Texans fall to the Baltimore Ravens, 33-16. Our quarterback, Deshaun Watson, had, 30, uh, had 25 completions off of 36 attempts with a completion percentage of 69.4% for 275 yards, uh, one touchdown, one pick, was sacked four times with a quarterback rating of 89.5. David Johnson had 11 carries for 34 yards, averaging 3.1 yard carry. Longest run was nine yards. Deshaun Watson had five carries for 17 yards. Will Fuller had a one carry for no yards, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, Brandon Cooks five uh, uh, was targeted eight times, caught five catches for 95 yards. Randall Cobb was targeted six times, got five catches for 59 yards. Aikens targeted seven times, got seven catches for 55 yards. Darren Fells was targeted four times, got two catches for 23 yards and a touchdown. Steals targeted twice with two catches for 16 yards. David Johnson was targeted five times, but only caught two catches for uh, 16 yards. And Kiki caught was targeted twice. Caught two passes, but had a crucial fumble. And we're going to talk about that. And uh, Lamar Jackson on the Ravens side. Lamar Jackson had 20, uh, 18 completions for 24 attempts for a completion percentage of 75 yards with uh, 204 yards. I mean, a completion percentage of 75 with uh, 204 yards. One touchdown, no interceptions. Was sacked four times by a quarterback rating of 113. Um, they, their leading rusher was uh, Edwards with ten care with ten carries for seventy three yards. Mark Ingram had uh, fifty five uh, nine carries for fifty five yards and a touchdown off a thirty yard scamper. Lamar Jackson had sixteen uh, sixteen attempts for uh, fifty for fifty four yards, no touchdowns. And J.K. Dobbins had two carries for uh, forty eight yards and really a bat break at the end with a forty four yard. Basically, the just when the Texans look like they they giving up. Listen, listen, here's the deal. Here's, here's completely the deal. I want to apologize to everybody out there. I made you know, a couple of videos during the off season talking about you know the receiving core. A couple of videos talking about uh, you no know, Deshaun Watson thinking that, like, like saying that Deshaun Watson was going to be a cerebral assassin this year, and they I had him. To at the very least play an MVP level, I said in the video that he might not even win the MVP because he could have stats all of this world. But if Patrick Mahomes has similar stats or good stats and they're the number one seed, they're going to lean towards giving it to the number one seed nine times out of ten. I was wrong. I know we're only two weeks in, but I vastly, vastly, vastly underestimated how poorly coached. Deshaun Watson is, how poorly ran this organization is, and don't want to turn it into a Bill O'Brien session, but you got to call a spade a spade. You got to call these ways. If it walk like a duck, it quack like a duck, it's a damn duck. I, I've been saying that. And the point is, you had all off season, all off season, to prepare for the Kansas City Chiefs. You know well, off top, just you have all season to prepare for a team. But when that schedule came out in May, you had from May, or from the end of May, or middle of May, all the way into September 10th to prepare for the Kansas City Chiefs. You've been in quarantine. you were able to come up with some game plans. You looked vastly, extremely unprepared in that game. You back, though. You have 10 days. I've been hearing, got 10 days, got 10 days. That's the, that's the good thing. You got 10 days. And Baltimore's just coming off a game. Just like last year, remember we we played Baltimore after our bye week. After we had two weeks, and we had the bye week. You know, we played against Jacksonville and London. Had our bye week, so we had two weeks to prepare for Baltimore. Last year, lost forty one to six. You had ten days, lost thirty three to sixteen at home. That's on coaching. 
for you to continuously come out there looking unprepared. They were talking about uh, during the game. They were talking about uh, the the the, uh, the ladies on the sideline talking about you. You see Texan players over there telling each other to wake up. Hey, we got snap out of it. Wake up. Like you are professionals. You are getting paid. Yeah, I understand it's a three o'clock game. I understand ain't no fans. There ain't no excuse. Ain't no fans for Baltimore. Ain't no fans for these other games going on. Everybody else ain't got no fans. Why do you have the excuse? We ain't got a true offseason. Ain't nobody else got no true offseason. Why do you constantly keep on bringing up these bullshit-ass excuses? Like, I, it, it's, like I said, I wasn't even mad about the game. It's just when you think about everything and it, it, you just think about everything, it just all comes back full circle of how unprepared this team is week after week. And this, I know it was only two weeks, but this is something we've been saying for the past six, seven years. This team is unprepared in big moments and in big games. You have a star quarterback. You're going up against the Super Bowl, the defending Super Bowl champ, uh, a league MVP two years ago. You're going up against last year's league MVP. So you're back, you're going against 2018 and 2019 league MVPs back to back. You're supposed to be, you have a quarterback that's on that level. Why are you not competitive? Why? I don't care about the, well, you know, uh, the Ravens are one of the best teams in the league. They were number one team last year. The Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year. I mean, there's no shame in losing to the Chiefs. There's no shame in losing to the Ravens. If you take, if, if these games are spread out, I mean, people are going to overblow it because they're both in week one and week two, and you can start off 0-2. But if they was like week seven and week 19, I mean, or, or week one and week 10, and you lost both those games, you're really not bad in the eye because it's just, it's just part of the season. That's a loser's mentality. You have a quarterback that's on par with them. In my opinion, you have a quarterback that's better than Lamar Jackson. But at the same time, you're supposed to be able to look, at least look competitive. You know, you're looking competitive. You're you're down, you're down 17 points in both games before you start actually moving the football. You're down multiple digits. Come on, man. Come on, you, you, you in this whole lackadaisical approach. You're down 17 points, but yet you're just walking up to the office. Come on, man. Come on, where's the sense of urgency? Where's the up-tempo? Where's the, we got to hurry to put this ball in the end zone so we can try to make a comeback, we can try to make a game of it. And don't simply try to pad your stats at the end of the game, like, oh, well, you know, we still threw for over, uh, we, uh, I mean, Lamar Jack, uh, Deshaun Watson still threw for more yards than Patrick Mahomes, and Deshaun Watson still threw for more yards than Lamar Jackson. None of that really matters. What matters is that scoreboard at the end of the game, who won, who lost. I don't give a damn who threw for more yards in the game. I don't care who rushed for more yards in the game. All I care about is the scoreboard. In the, I, I care about who won the game at the end of the game. And for the last two weeks, the Texans ain't it. And the Texans look like a bad football team. It ain't like you lost 31-30 uh, to 30 against the Chiefs and then you backed up and lost 20-17 uh, uh, to 17 against the Ravens. Good games. You throwing haymakers back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. That ain't the case. That ain't the case. You was never into either one of these games. Kansas City scored 31 unanswered points on you last week. And then right here in Baltimore, you were down 10 nothing before you even put points on the board. Then you was down 20-10. Then down 23-10. I mean, uh, uh, down, down 23-10. Like, come on. You not you are not looking competitive at all. At all. Like, you are not looking competitive no time in this game. The only time you look competitive is the first drive, the first series. Other than that, you are no longer looking competitive. Come on, man. And my boy Kiki catches the ball. And for my, his first reception was a good reception. He looked, looked, looked a little decent. It was like the little, uh, the little sling pass. I've been asking what they did. They finally they did some things. Let me find out, Tim Kelly. You've been watching my videos because he kind of you did some little jet sweeps and things I was asking for in the video I shot last night. But, and then Kiki, I understand it's Marlon Humphreys, but you got to hold on to that ball and then went back for a touchdown. I know that's not on the defense. And, like, J.J., for the most part, played decent, had two sacks, had a bad pass. He looked as similar to Venice J.J. And they kind of contained Lamar Jackson for the most part in the beginning of the game. Like I said, Lamar Jackson didn't have an extremely explosive MVP type game. You don't watch this game, you know, Lamar Jackson's the MVP. This, this is nothing like he had the game last week or the game against the Texans last year. But the thing is, and this is the thing that nobody's talking about. Nobody's talking about this shit. Because same thing last week with Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes then just go out there and have a typical 5,000, I mean, 400-yard, four, uh, five-touchdown game against you. 
he, Lamar Jackson ain't rushed for over 100 yards and throw four touchdowns or rushed for three touchdowns and had these big ass long runs, even though it was a couple times he looked like he was about to. Because that one with, uh, um, when Justin Reed got the shoestring tackle, it looked like that Lamar Jackson about to take it to the house. Even though you didn't have those type of games, the fact is, they didn't even need them. That's the part that nobody's talking about. They didn't even need them. Patrick Mahomes didn't need to go out there and throw 400 yards and five touchdowns. Lamar Jackson didn't need to rush for over 100 yards and rush for three touchdowns. They didn't have to have the MVP level games, not only to beat you, but to beat you bad, to show that you wasn't even in their weight class. I don't even got to play my A game. I can play my C and D game and still beat you by 20 points. Still beat you by three, uh, by, uh, by two touchdowns in the field goal. I don't even have to have an A-plus game. I don't even have to have a B game. I can have a C game, a D game, and I still can sun you. I still can beat you by 20 or 15 points, 15 or more points. I can still beat you by, by double-digit touchdowns. But I, can, I can beat you by multiple touchdowns, I mean. I can beat you by multiple touchdowns while even having an A-plus game. Sit down, because I just sunned you right there. Sit down. You know where near me. You know where near my weight class. You know where near me. That's what this looks like right now. And it's extremely bad and extremely frustrating because we have a quarterback. And normally, nine times out of ten, normally in normal situations, quarterbacks always elevate their team and always can play a, play a cut above the rest. Quarterbacks can always get pa get past bad offensive lines, get bad uh bad defenses, get bad not having all the weapons. But one thing that we have underestimated is coaching. It's coaching. And like I say, you have you have a office you have a offensive minded head coach who played linebacker in college. You have a offensive coordinator who played defensive line in college who uh like, like you have guys who are defensive naturally guys, guys who are naturally defensive guys who are calling offensive plays and is running the offense by being an offensive-minded head coach. And you wonder why your offense struggles. You wonder why you've never had a top-10 offense. Never had a top-10 offense. And his whole whole career in being a Houston Texan has never had a top-10 offense. If I'm not mistaken, I don't even think Bill O'Brien had a top-10 offense when he was at Penn State. So where is this whole offensive-mindedness coming from? Where is this whole offensive guru because he yelled at Tom Brady on the sidelines 10 years ago? Come on, man. Really, that's really, that's really what we're talking about. Come on, like like this it is frustrating. It, it is extremely frustrating, and we're already in week two, and we're like fire Bill O'Brien. That, that, that's that's weird. We're we're in week two. We are like fire Bill O'Brien. It's, it's no pass go. It's not no collect two hundred dollars. It's, it's none of that. <laughs> like it, it's not it's none of that. Like we already we, we already boom. We need to find a new head coach because the Kansas because. The L.A. Chargers, where a rookie quarterback looked extremely competitive, had to force Kansas City to go on a game time drive and take them to overtime for Kansas City to get the win against them, against a rookie quarterback. And we know that the Chargers are talented. I've been saying that all the time when I was talking about the whole Phillip Rivers thing to the Colts, that the Chargers are a vastly talented team. So we understand all that. Oh, but we thinking these guys are better than Deshaun? No. But has Deshaun look well? No. It, it, it's, it's, it's apparent. It's, it's, it's clear. Of course, he's missing Hopkins because you look, he does not look comfortable because he doesn't have anybody to go to. Now, I've seen that he threw to Cobb a lot, and I call for that. That You, you pay Cobb this money, where yet? You, you, you pay Cobb this money, where yet? You trade for Ken Steers, where yet? And Cobb, um, Cobb, for the most part, looked decent today. And same thing with Kutz because they were playing well early on to the game. But this whole lackadaisical approach. Like, like, that's why I keep falling back on coaching because you can see flashes of, of what they want to do and what they try to do, but from a coaching standpoint, it just don't look good. This whole lackadaisical approach, and I, I get and this is probably something of Deshaun Watson being cool, calm under pressure, him being, you know, uh, even keel might be a detriment to him because... You don't see a you don't see a sense of urgency when you're down. I know he wasn't down much in college, if ever. He wasn't down much in high school, if ever. So he's never really been in those situations. And if he was down, it's only down by one possession, so you can get it. It don't work like that when you're in the NFL, bro. Like you in the NFL, and teams are scoring points on you. Teams have found out the recipe. Hey, if we win the toss, we gonna give you the ball first. 
Because you're going to fuck up before halftime and not score. We're going to get the ball, score before the half, and then back though, get the ball after half and score. You know the Texans didn't touch the ball in the second half until six minutes and 20 seconds left. The Ravens got the ball after, in, in the start of the third quarter and continued. They only got a field goal out of it. They didn't even get a full seven. They only got a field goal out of it. But they were able to melt the clock all the way down to six minutes and 26 seconds. And then the Houston Texans back though, took the whole six minutes and then some in the fourth quarter to only kick a field goal to make it 23-13. to 13. Instead of, I mean, they wasted the opportunity. It was it was twenty three to ten. You milk. They milked all. They milked them the over half the over half the quarter. All right. They they milked almost ten minutes of the quarter. And then you back though finished off the rest of the quarter and then some of the fourth quarter and you couldn't even muster a touchdown out of it. When this team is supposed to be carried by an offense, you have a two time Pro Bowler quarterback. You have a guy who a lot of people picked to be the MVP last year and this year combined. Like, it was some guys that picked uh, Deshaun Watson last year. It was some guys that picked Deshaun Watson this year to win MVP. We know what this guy can do. I don't want to hit this hole that maybe Deshaun's just a good college quarterback. We've seen Deshaun play well in the NFL. We've seen what he can do in this league. So don't don't miss me with that. This is this is no way throwing any shade as far as at Deshaun Watson, even though I do see some things that he needs to do better. Yeah, it's some things he needs to do better. And one thing he does need to do better is he needs to take control. He needs to take full control of this offense. And he needs to be like, he, he has to, he's going to have to man up and be like, no, we not running it like this. We can't, we, we got, we got to be a little bit more urgent. And like I said, this might be something about him being so even kill and being cool and calm under pressure. And I get all that. But at the same time, you down 17 points. You got, you got to move the football. You know this offense is going to run the football. We, you know this offense is going to run the football. You, you know what this offense is going to do. They're going to run the football and drain the clock. They just drained over nine minutes in the fourth, in the third quarter. Before you touched the ball, you didn't touch the ball until six minutes and 20 seconds. It was six, six minutes and 26 seconds the first time you touched the ball in the second half. And you were down 23 to 10. You were down 13 points. You were down by two possessions. If you get a touchdown in that situation going into the fourth quarter, you're only down by six. Come on, man. Like I say, the Ravens didn't play extremely great game today, but they did enough not only to beat you, but to beat you bad. And they didn't even play extremely game. It wasn't like they looked vintage Ravens. They didn't look like, oh, the 13-3 and three Baltimore Ravens of last year. They didn't look like that. They didn't look, they, they, they didn't come out there like, they did not come out there and straight dominate you, but they dominated you. That's the same thing with Kansas City last week. They didn't come out there and dominate you, but they dominated you. They dominated you without even dominating you. And that's it's just... I'm getting worked up. I'm getting worked up because it's so... It's the frustration that's just oozing out because you like... You know this team has... And... You know, I you know how you feel about the receivers. You know, okay, yeah, you wish we wish we had hop cool, whatever the case may be. There are things you can do offensively with this team. That's why I'm not going to blame the personnel offensively. Maybe the offensive line because the offensive line has looked like they're taking three steps back. This offensive line does not look good. And what happened to Max Sharpton? Like, what what happened to him? Like, what what what, what was Kyle Mitty? Like, what, what happened? Like, Max Sharpton was the only I. Like, I mean, you know how we feel about Larry Matunso, who's a pro bowler. I think he's a good left tackle. I mean, made the top 100. But you don't even hear about Max Sharpen. Like, Max Sharpen's name don't get called for no penalties. He don't get called for no false start. You don't, get, you don't hear nothing. You don't hear nothing, which is good. When you don't hear nothing about him, I mean, he ain't getting beat. That mean he ain't giving them no penalties or nothing like that. All of a sudden, he just he wasn't, he wasn't playing. And then Will Fuller left the game, but he came back, but still didn't get any targets. All he had was that one carry, and I think maybe that one carry. And and I kind of mentioned that, like, you might not want to do anything with Will Fuller outside of have him doing regular receiver stuff because of a, of injury concerns with him. But, like I say, you, you have uh, Randall Cobb, you have Brandon Cush, you have Kiki, even though now you're not trusting Kiki right now because my boy, Texas A Red Raider, but my boy's on thin ice because there's, there's two games. That was against the Broncos last year that they fumbled to turn to a touchdown. And then this game right here, fumbled to turn to a touchdown. And 
I think the one against the Broncos last year was more detrimental because that sparked it be one because it went to Kareem and it sparked and it sparked the uh, 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 ignited a fire, sparked the fire, and it, it just went down here from there. This game here, this is a good team, and you don't want to give a good team easy chances and easy touchdowns and things like that. But and again, this was Marlon Humphreys making making the play, so I I, I don't want to just full out fault Kiki because he, you do want to fault him for the fumble, but I'm not just going. to I mean, bad plays. I mean, bad plays happen to even good players. But, but once again, he went right back in the doghouse because you never seen Kiki again in this game. So, all in all, man, like this, this you 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 gotta do something. You you have to do something. Like you really have to do something. Like like you you have to do something. We knew that this all we we come into the season talking about the offense was going to carry the team, and yet this offense can't get out of first gear. They look like they're still in the preseason. Like this offense cannot get out of first gear. And what is that? When you're supposed to have an offensive minded head coach. Like like what what you have an off you have an offensive minded head coach. You have an off a, a offensive coordinator supposed to be on sync and supposed to be locked in with Deshaun Watson. Why? Why? Why does this offense look so atrocious? Why does the offense look so bad? Why? Like, Hop, Hop was the complete masker. Like, Hop masked a lot of flaws of this offense because he was able to make good catches. He was always able to make contested catches. Like, the one uh, the one catch that Deshaun badly underthrew, the, uh, I think it was Brandon Cooks, it was basically his feet. This should have been a touchdown. If, if it was Hop, it would have been a touchdown. But, again, that's what I said about him being more cerebral because he's going to, he's going to force him to make better type of passes. He can't just throw oh, a lazy pass because you got Hop out there. And maybe, hey, he got to get used to not having Hop out there. And I get that. But who fault is that, though? Who fault is that? You knew we were in the middle of a pandemic. You knew that it wasn't going to be the, the, a regular off season. It's like you get, it's like you creating built-in excuses. Why would you get rid of somebody that has chemistry with your quarterback? You, why would you do that? Like that makes zero sense, zero, none whatsoever. But it is what it is. It, like I said, like I said before, this Texans team is playing like a seven and nine football team, and the way I look at it, this team looks bad, and um, I would not be surprised at all. If this team, you know, you see how Pittsburgh, we play Pittsburgh next week. You see how Pittsburgh play? I would not be surprised if this team is going to be one and six going into the bye week. And then by that time, I think you have to make a decision about Bill O'Brien. You absolutely have to make a decision about Bill O'Brien because this is not going to look good. Not going to look good at all. This is not going to look good. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't clicked that bell. Get more videos. I holla. Thank you.